Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this week's Take 2 review. This week's review is a new movie, like I said I'll do, um, in the last episode. This week's movie is Once Upon a Time in the West. No it ain't. <laughs> yeah, there's a blooper for you. It's a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Not very close. Um, stars um, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio with many other uh, great cameos um, throughout. I decided to watch this again um, last night just for this review and I took well, I mean, little pages like this, but I took 15 pages of notes. Uh, because I'm really trying with these reviews to up my game at least a little bit. Anyways, well, let's get into this. Um, Brad Pitt, his character's name is Cliff. He is a stuntman by trade, but he's more of um, Leo, Leo DiCaprio's Rick Dalton characters, more of his Man Friday, his butler, his, you know, do whatever. Uh, you start the movie with uh, Rick being at a point in his career where he's done TV for years and he's done a few movies, but he wants to break into the movies because he's just, he feels boxed in and he feels like his career's just coming to an end and uh, pretty much he just has um, you know uh, he's wanting his life to change Cliff you know Brad Pitt's character he he could really care either way because you know uh, Dalton's his meal ticket anyways the after they've uh, they introduce you to them and they're at the uh, studio it moves along it's a very leisurely movie and I actually enjoyed it more on the second viewing than I did the first because you're kind of like Quentin I know you want to tell this you want to tell it the way you want to tell it <laughs> but the story is just dragging along but it actually moves a little better on subsequent viewings. Um, anyways, they leave the studio and they end up uh, at Musso and Frank's. And, and this movie is just a love letter to old Hollywood. But, uh, and I've never been to Hollywood, but um, I've loved the movies. And, I mean, I have thousands of movies. And I just love movies all my life. So, you know. Moose Home Franks has to do with old Hollywood, and um, it's really a love letter to old Hollywood. Anyways, they meet uh, Mr. Schwartz, uh, played by Al Pacino, and he's an agent, and he pretty much tells Rick that uh, he needs to go to Italy. You know, there's plenty of work in Italy, but that just breaks Rick's heart. He, he just wants to... Um, he wants to be an American movie star. He doesn't want to go to Italy. He, he just doesn't like that. Um, I've got my notes here. Uh, the show that Rick got popular on is called um, Bounty Law. And I said it was a Republican's wet dream because the bounty hunter goes after the people. But he just, you know... The old thing, dead or wanted dead or alive, well, he just kills them. And it's, it's kind of over the top, but it is Tarantino, so, you know, it's got to be over the top. Um, let's see. Oh, I forgot in my notes that, uh, Brad Pitt's Cliff character, he's almost... too damn macho uh, and it's probably just because it's even though I watch a lot of old uh, exploitation and trash his character is just kind of super sexist 
uh, super macho. I don't know. It's not doesn't really detriment the movie, but it kind of pulls you out of things, even though you know it's period piece. Um, let's see. Oh um, well, I've got I've got notes that really don't pertain to that. Just about like there's a stretch where Pitt's driving through Hollywood at night and a, you know, another one of Quentin's love letters to Hollywood. Um, and it's nice to see. There's a lot of wonderful visuals in the movie. Uh, a lot of great cinematography. Um, and then they work in Sharon Tate and the Polanski. Uh, Roman Polanski. Um, the movie, you know, is not historically accurate. <laughs> uh, well, seeing as Leo's character never existed, uh, but uh, the historical figures it works in, it does okay to fairly well for the most part. Um, it's just, you know, it's there's. So many storylines, it's like Pulp Fiction. But Pulp Fiction, you could... Where the storylines kind of were jarring as they went into another storyline. You kind of knew what was going on. Sometimes these just kind of blend in. And it, it makes it difficult to um, tell where the movie's trying to go. And spots. Uh, one reason people don't like Brad Pitt's character in the movie, though, is he had killed his wife, supposedly on accident. Um. Yeah, the the Manson girls are in it. Rick struggles, and he, he gets on a show called, uh, uh, or he gets a pilot. Or maybe just to not... I can't remember. He gets a part. That's what it is. On a show called Lancer. And uh, that stars Timothy Oliphant. And Timothy Oliphant's character is so done up to look like someone else. I didn't even realize it was him the first time. Um, anyways, Rick fails miserably. And then... Because he's just been drinking a lot. And he kind of... Uh, has to pull himself up by his bootstraps and get his ass back in the game. Uh, and he does that. But then eventually, um, after that's said and done, you know, he has nothing else to go to. So he ends up taking the Schwartz's offer to go to Italy and make movies. Well, in the interim, while he's working a lot, uh, Cliff, or Brad Pitt's character, doesn't do that much. He's kind of just doing errands for him most of the time. He does get him one job, um, <laughs> and he ends up laughing at Bruce Lee, and they end up getting in a fight, and he ends up getting kicked out. But he, he's mainly on the road, and he does see the Manson girls. And he gets intrigued by one. And he ends up taking her home. Uh, and that causes a whole nother mess. Um, anyways. I don't want to give the entire movie away. But if you can tell from this review. There's so much going on in this. That you. I know you have to pay attention to a movie. When you watch a movie. But. There's so much going on in this. You can pay attention and, and miss mounds of things. You have to watch this multiple times. But anyways, when they get back from Italy, uh, all hell breaks loose. And it really makes the whole movie worth watching to watch the last 20, 25 minutes. This movie's almost three hours long. And I don't want to tell you about the last 30 minutes at all. Because then 
you'll try to skip through the movie to get to that point. But I'm happy I got it. I was almost worried to buy it when I bought it. Uh, but I'm happy I did. Uh, there's a there's a bit when uh, Rick's in Italy that they're showing the movies he did. And it's a love letter to the Italian cinema. And in the last 10, 12 years, I've really gotten into Italian cinema of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And uh, it just made me really happy to see that uh, and see someone's uh, love for that on, on the screen. Anyway, um, I think if you like Tarantino's work, you'll like this. If you like old Hollywood, you'll like this. If you like, um, period dramas, <laughs> you'll like this. If you want constant action or... A lot of other things, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. But I think, just with the name, I think you would kind of not be interested. But, I mean, this review, I know, even after I edited it down, it's probably going to be 15 minutes. <laughs> so if you've made it this far, thank you, you get a gold star. Uh, <laughs> but if not, I understand. Because I don't want to listen to me babble for 15 minutes. But when a movie's three hours long, you have a lot to talk about. And still try not to give it all away. A um, lot, lot of uh, good cameos by people to who don't want to name them all. Because that's much better of a surprise to me if you see people and go, Oh, oh. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in it, check it out. If not, what well up? Um...